In this example, I'm going to go through a left-tailed hypothesis test for a sample with one proportion, and we're going to use a quality control example. So what we're going to look at um, are space fasteners. Um, there is a lot of quality control testing performed on them. Um, so it's simple things like nuts, bolts, all of those things that need to be used on satellites, um, rockets, everything like that. And as you can imagine, um, they need to be quite um, uh, uniform, um, well-produced, good materials, um, et cetera, et cetera. So lots of quality control performed on these nuts, bolts, everything all that are all deemed space fasteners. Okay, so here's our problem. Let's look at a standard hexagon head cap screw. Okay, uh, and let's say that we have a company that's producing them. Recently, they upgraded their machines and believe that they have decreased the percentage of screws deemed as defective. Okay, and historically, they had one out of 125 screws deemed as defective. And now, the question to answer is the following. Okay. So let's say after replacing their machines, they sampled a thousand screws and found that six were defective. At the 1% level of significance, is there sufficient evidence to find that the percent of defective screws has decreased since replacing their machines? So was it worth it? Did we actually decrease the number of defective screws? So let's go have a look. We're gonna use a hypothesis test to answer this question. Okay, so first thing we're gonna need to do is define our null and our alternative hypotheses. So our null hypothesis is going to be um, that nothing has changed, that P is still the one in 125, uh, which it originally was. That puts us at 0.8% defective or 0.008. The alternative will be, um, sorry, just clean this up a little bit. The alternative will be that P is smaller than that rate. Or if you will, it's smaller than 0 0.008. Now, before we actually go and perform a hypothesis test, there is something we should check. So I'm just gonna do this on the side. So when we're dealing with proportion questions, we want n times p and n times one minus p to be greater than five. Um, in our case, um, and actually, let's do it this way. Um, in our case, we sample a thousand screws and we found that six are defective. Um, so let's go have a look here. Our sample result is six in a thousand or 0 0.006 um, as our p-bar. So n times p-bar is just going to be um, the thousand times 0 0.006, which gives us six. So that's okay, that's greater than five. And n times one minus p bar, so we'll clean it up a bit here, um, that's also gonna be okay. That's gonna be a thousand times one minus 0 0.006, which will give us the remaining 900 and 94, which is also greater than five. So we're good in this case. Our assumptions that n times p and n times one minus p are indeed satisfied. It's actually pretty quick and easy to spot them if you know this number. So that six is greater than five, 
which is um, the cutoff, so we're good. And you'll realize if we have six defective um, parts, um, n times one minus p is the number of non-defective. So six defective gives 994 not defective parts, if that makes any sense. And that's the n times one minus p. Okay, um, now moving on. Uh, next thing we wanna do is just kind of visualize this problem. So let's have a look at what we're dealing with. We wanna prove that the number of defective parts has decreased. So originally we're at um, 0 0.08 for P. And what we want, we want a result low enough. We want our number of defective parts to be really low. Um, we're hoping that it's in this bottom 1% rejection region. Okay. Uh, and now let's go see where it lies, if you will. I'm just going to pause the video and clean up this work just a little bit. Okay, that's a bit better. So again, what we're trying to ascertain is, is our sample result in this rejection region or not? This region right here, this bottom 1%. Um, if it is, then we have this scenario here. Um, where it's in the rejection region. Now, what could also happen is that it's outside of the rejection region and not far enough away from the original 0.8% to draw any conclusions. So let's go ahead and um, calculate our test statistic, get its p-value, and that will tell us whether or not it's in this rejection region or not. Okay. So keeping going, next thing to do, let's go get our test statistic. Okay, so what we want is Z test. The formula for that is the following. We take P bar minus P, divide by the square root of P times one minus P over N. Okay, so let's go and do that calculation. So P bar, Let's go figure out what that is. It turns out that it is the six um, defective parts out of the thousand. That's 0 0.06, if you will. And P is the one in 125, which is the 0 0.08. Uh, and on the bottom, um, so let's just write that as the 0 0.08. That's just a little bit shorter, sorry, on the 0 0.008. It's a little bit shorter to write here. Uh, let's just do this when we're doing it on the bottom. Sorry about that. There we go. So P is the 0 0.08. And one minus the 0 0.08 is one minus P, all divided by N, which is a thousand in this case. Okay. So 0 0.006. On the top, minus 0 0.008, all divided by. Now, this beautiful um, calculation here on the bottom is quite involved. Um, it's uh, 0 0.008 um, times 0.992. Divided by a thousand, all square rooted. Um, you can go punch that into a calculator. I'm just going to pause the video and get that solution. Okay. Um, and that gives on the bottom here in this denominator 0.002817. And on the top, that's negative 0.002. And that gives negative 0.71 for our Z test. Okay. 
Um, so what does that mean? Um, so this guy, this we do need Excel for. I'm just going to write out the formula for now. So our p-value related to this said test. I'm going to use the norm dot s dot dist call to get it. And since it's on the left side, I want the area to the left of my p-value. Sorry, to the left of my um, sample result, if you will. Um, I don't need to do a one minus, so I just do norm.s.dist. I put in the negative 0.071 for the z re test result, put in true or one for cumulative, and see what I get. And I'm just going to pause the video and pull up that Excel solution. Okay, so here it is. So the p-value, again, we use that norm.s.dist call on it, and that ends up giving 23.87%. So 23.89%, sorry, um, is well um, above the required 1%, which is our level of significance. So let's go back and put this 23% on our, um, our written notes here. Beautiful, so that is 0.23389, or if you will, that's 23.89%. Um, so that, actually we could even move it over a little bit here. That p-bar is quite far away from the rejection region. There is not much difference between the 6% from our sample result and the 8% we had originally. So is it worth spending all that machine, sorry, all that money replacing your machines? In this case, doesn't look like it. Um, so let's just formally kind of finish this hypothesis test here. So just keeping going. Next thing is to make our decision. In this case, it's going to be to fail to reject H naught since our p-value at that 23.89% is much larger than the 1% level of significance, we call that LOS, um, that was originally defined. So our conclusion is that there is not enough evidence to conclude that the defective rate has decreased. Okay, and that concludes our hypothesis test. So no, we have not decreased the percentage of defective parts after replacing the machines. Was it worth that replacing them then? Hmm, probably not. P-value of 23% is pretty darn high. Okay, thanks for watching.